Good morning, everyone who have joined us today on Facebook and on YouTube and on Instagram. Welcome to Ministries of Hope Christian Church Sunday morning sermon. We are located here at 385 Garrisonville Road in Stafford, Virginia. Please come on down and join us when this pandemic is over. We would love to see you, our followers. We would love to worship with you. So come on down and join us. We are under the pastoral leadership of Senior Pastor Reverend Flory Williams, a wonderful woman of God, great, mighty leader, giving honor unto her all the time. I am Reverend Haverly Hutchings. Let us go to God in prayer. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you, dear Father God, for today, for giving us life, Lord God. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Bless this your word, Lord God, and decrease me, Lord, and let you alone be seen and heard. Open the hearts and the minds and the ears of your people, Lord God. Help us to accept you, help us to hear you, and help us to come to know you as our personal Savior and Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. God is good. God is always good all the time. At this time, I'd like to, you know, give an acknowledgement to my pastor, Reverend Flora Williams. As again, she is a wonderful leader. She is, she leads by example. And that's one of the things that I, I really admire about her. Everything, she's not going to tell you to do something that she hasn't done herself. She has been there, done that and has set the pace and, and leading by following God. And so his her followers can follow God too. Um, giving honor to my our ministers and my husband and my family. Thank you so much for your support, your strength and your daily encouragement. Last but not least, to you who are watching on Facebook and on YouTube and Instagram, welcome. Thank you for being here, and may God, may God use something in this morning's sermon to change your life in a mighty way. Our sermon today is coming to us from the book of Exodus, and if you have been following us in the past year or so, you would, you would notice that we have been going through the Bible, studying book by book. Um, chapter by chapter, word by word, verse by verse. So I'd like to just take you back to one of the books we've already covered and um, to see the book in its entirety, which is the book of Exodus. You can go to our um, YouTube collection um, and you can see all our studies and us speaking the, the word apart and all the sermons and everything so that God can keep on blessing your lives and you can be, be continually fed by the word of God. Amen. So turn with me um, to Exodus chapter 3. Uh, we are in the book of Exodus and I'm coming to you from the King James Version. So um, read. I'm going to read the first 14 verses um, because we're going to go back and see Moses who is the author of this book. Moses has um, written the first five books of the Bible. And Moses is the author of um, Exodus. And Moses is also the one that was called by God to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt into the promised land of Canaan. That was a mighty long journey. And for th thousands and thousands of people um, th th um, that Moses led out of, uh, of, of, out of Egypt. So in the beginning, Moses was called by God to complete this, this wonderful, miraculous, long task. Let us go back to the beginning where Moses was called and see how Moses answered his call. All right, we are in Exodus chapter 3, and it reads, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the, the backside of the desert and came to the mountain 
of God, even to Herod. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great thing thy why the bush is not burnt. And the Lord saw that he turned aside to see. God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. He said, here I am. And he says, draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from thy foot. For the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cries by reasoning of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrow. And I am come down to deliver them out of the land of Egypt, and to bring them out of the land unto the good land, and a, and a large, unto the land flowing with milk and honey, and to the place of the Canaanites, and to the Hittites, and to the Ammonites, and to the Pezzesites, and to the, the Hivites, and the Jejusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherein the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mightest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I? What should I go into Pharaoh? And what and, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he says, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. That when thou hast brought forth the children, brought forth the people out of Egypt, he shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said to God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The Lord of our fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall send, say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? 14 and last. And God says unto Moses, I am that I am. He says, Thus shall say this unto the children of Israel, I am that sent me unto you. Amen. Amen. You notice that in the beginning, when God called Moses, Moses didn't just jump up and say, Yes, yes, Lord, send me. Moses looked at his surrounding. He looked at what he was and who he was. And he, he, he's like, wait a second, I can't do that. I can't walk in there and tell the king, the, the pharaoh, to let his slaves go. Who am I? Why, why would you think that pharaoh would even listen to me, little old me? But the Lord answered and said unto him, Because I, I will be with you. I will be with you. I give you the authority. I give you what you need to go where I sent you and to do what I tell you to do. When we are listening to the, to the voice of God, sometimes we hesitate. We hesitate because we look upon our normal human life. We look through the eyes of flesh and see the limitations that men have. We see the things that we can't do. 
but our God that we serve, see beyond what we can't do and see what he can do through us as, as long as we are a willing vessel, as long as we present ourselves as a living sacrifice, open and willing to accept God into you and, and know that you are not going to do this of yourself because you can't do it. But you have enough faith to believe that the God in me can get the task done. The things that we seem impossible or that looks like we're going to lose. Because right now, I know that Moses was thinking that if I go up there and talk to Pharaoh like that and command him to let his slaves, his pe the, the people that are working for him, the people that are, are building his statues, the people that are, are plowing and making um, all his, his monuments and everything for him. Right, all the people he slaves that are working for him. If who am I to tell him to let him go? I must not want to live, or I must want to go join them. But the Lord says, When he is in the vessel, you can smile at the storm. You, when he commands and says and put it in the atmosphere and already put it in your life if you are listening to this message that means the lord is speaking to you there is a whole lot of burning bushes around us today that we we are we the lord is reaching out but we are blinded to the word of god we are not paying attention to the message that god is sending through all the, the flames that is coming. You're just paying attention today. Where we, It seems as if we're just paying attention to the flame and not the God in the flame. Remember, God is in everything we do, in everything that is around us, right? The devil can use it for, for his purpose. But when you stand in the name of God, everything the devil means for your to harm you god will turn it around for your good the, uh, moses was hesitant because before moses was there on that mountain moses was also living in pharaoh's palace that's where moses was living right and moses had to flee from pharaoh's palace because he saw one of the the egyptian beating an israelite and moses in, went in between them and strike that egyptian down there and some 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 of the, the 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 israelites saw that and the next day two of them was fighting and moses came and says come on bro your brothers you're not supposed to fight and instead of just going their separate ways, they turn around and say, what are you going to do? You're going to strike me dead like you strike that Egyptian down? So now Moses know that the word of him murdering the Egyptian is getting out. So he had to flee. So this is the place where God is sending him back to. He had to flee for his life. Because now he has done, he has broken the law to help an Israelite, right? So now you can understand Moses' fear when God is telling him, oh, now you got not only go back, you got to go to Pharaoh and you got to tell Pharaoh to let all the Israelites go. Can you imagine that Moses' heart just dropped to the ground? He cannot believe it. But in God, all things are possible. In God, your slate is wiped clean. In God, everything that God commands you to do is already done. All you have to do is willingly accept the task. When Moses tried to find different different um, excuses, well, they weren't excuses to him, reasons to him, but excuses to God. Well, I, I can't speak well, he says. I stutter. Jesus says, I got you covered. 
I'm going to send your brother Aaron to come and come and, and speak for you. He says, so, okay, all right, so who am I? Why would they believe me? The Lord says to him, I am. You see, God don't need no confirmation to be who he is. God don't need anyone to give him the authority to speak, to work. So when you go to God and when God sends you and you speak from the will of God, that is all the authority that you need to change your life. All you got to do is say yes. Say yes, Lord. You don't need to, to stop going to the club. You don't need to buy new clothes. You don't need to say, all right, all of these I'm going to get right first before I can go into God. No, God will get them right for you. All you have to do is say yes. Moses was skeptical because he was looking at his limitations. God says, don't worry about that. I got you covered. I made everything. Your path is plotted out by me. Everything that you're going to face is plotted out by me. And God told Moses what he was about to face. So when you hear the voice of God, you should also know that his Holy Spirit Spirit is going to come and lead you because now it's not like back there in the days of old. When Jesus Christ went to the cross, um, for, when Jesus Christ went to the cross and he became the sacrificial lamb, he left that Holy Spirit to guide us, to lead us, to carry us, to protect us. And all we have to do is to accept it when we hear the voice of God. We have to act on the call. God is, the, the, the Bible says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. When somebody knocks at your door, if you don't open it, they can't come in. And Jesus is right now knocking at your door. In other words, he is calling to you. Just like he called to Moses through the burning bush. The Lord is calling to you. Further down when you study um, Exodus, you will see the great and wondrous miracles that Moses performed, big not of himself, but because he answered the call in the first place, because he paid attention, because he stayed on the path that God commanded him to be on, because he kept his focus on God and he stand on the promise that God promised that he would do, that he would bring him forth, that he would be there for him. God told him to take off his shoes because where he was standing is holy ground. He didn't hesitate. He let go of that shoe. God is telling us that we should let go of our past. But some of us find it difficult to let go of the past and embrace God's plan for your present and for your future. God says, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you. You are preventing prosperity in your own life coming from God when you do not acknowledge his calling. When you harden your heart and stiffen your neck, and that means that you hear the word of God, you know the word of God, but you insist on still doing things the way you, the flesh wants you to do it. And yes, Satan is going to dress everything up and make it look like and feel like it is good. But remember, Everything that I have eaten that is good and delicious comes to an end. 
it finishes. But when you, the, 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 the word of God says, when that woman at the well asked God for water so that she didn't have to come back to the well and draw more water, Jesus turned to the woman and said to the woman, the water that I will give to you is going to be like a spring um, um, springing up inside you that you will never be thirsty again. When God changes your life, and you read his word and you study his word he is going to keep you he is going to allow you to see he says behold the goodness of the lord he says he's going to let you see great and mighty things that you know not of so loved ones i urge you to spend time in the presence of god just just a minute. Give God just five minutes of your time each day and see how your life changed. I dare you. Five minutes. Hear his call. Understand his voice. Just five minutes a day. You don't even have to, to say anything. Take the Bible and say, God, this is your time. Tell me what to say. Listen to my heart, Lord God, because man might see the outward appearance, but God goes down to the heart. He ain't playing. You know, you can put on a show for everybody to think that it's good. But you see, in the heart, you cannot put on a show in your heart. And that's where God dwells. Because God is a spirit and he speaks to your spirit. So you have to be true to him. You can't put on a show and because your good works will not get you into heaven. You have to love God and believe God with your spirit. That's where God is. That's who God is. God is you should God wants you to worship him in spirit and in truth. A whole lot of us jump up when this pandemic just hit and was saying lord lord um if that people who was called by thy name oh you're still called by god's name so are you still humbling yourself and are you still praying and are you still turning from your wicked ways come on now are you still turning or are you relaxed now oh the, the vaccine is, is coming out and the death toll is going down. So now I can relax. I can go back to what I, I, I was doing before. Not so. You will see further down in Exodus that every single time the children of Israel, even though God saved them and took them across the Red Sea, every time they turn against God, Every time they relax and go back, try to go back to their old ways, they were severely punished. The older head that came out of Israel didn't even reach the promised land because of their disobedience. When you answer the call, you have, it, no one is perfect. You're going to fall, you're going to falter because even Moses, well, after he answered the call, you see, he was skeptical. He didn't know if he could do it. But he gave God the authority to take him through it. He gave God himself and he went. And God took him through it and God used him. And he is now standing as one of the, 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 the greats in the bible one of the, the the greatest man that ever lived a murderer who turned into a shepherd boy who was keeping flocks you don't have to be a somebody for god to use you all you have to do is say yes yes lord i believe I believe that salvation is found in no one else and that there is no other name given unto men by which I can be saved. 
Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God is risen from the dead, then you shall be saved. For with the mouth one for with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. You have to believe with your heart. You have to confess with your mouth. You have to believe that God is, as he say, I am that I am. You have to believe that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross to save you from your sin. So, so that now you don't need a goat or a lamb. You don't even need a priest. All you need to do is kneel down wherever you are. You don't have to physically kneel down. You just have to kneel down in your heart and cry out to God and say, yes, I am a sinner. I recognize who I am. Like Moses, I don't have eloquence to talk. I don't, I, I can't. But God, you can. So come into me and show me how. You see, God is calling you. And you have heard the words of the Lord. You have heard of the man called Moses the great prophet you have heard you have seen how he hesitated when he got his car so it's okay it's okay to acknowledge that you can't it's okay it's fine to say i i i god i'm a sinner but guess what? God already knows that. That's why he's calling you. The word of God says he didn't come to call those that were saved, but he's coming to call you and me, sinners to repentance. So today, you have heard the word of God. The Lord Jesus is speaking to you. Don't turn away from him today. Pray this prayer with me and confess your sin to him right now and accept him in your heart so that he can start leading you he can start guiding you he is knocking all you gotta do is open pray with me bow your head close your eyes and pray with me and it's close your eyes just because you want to shut out all the distractions of the world. You want to concentrate on God. So you pray with me right now. Let us pray. Dear God, I confess that I'm a sinner in need of salvation. I believe you died on the cross for my sin and rose again from the dead. Come into my heart, Lord and change my life. I turn from my sin and I invite you in my heart. I receive you as my Lord and Savior and I choose to follow and serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you have prayed that prayer, you are saved and don't let nobody tell you different because the lord says all you have to do is believe and confess and pray and and you will be saved accept him as your savior and lord so let me be the first one to welcome you into the kingdom of god if you don't have a church home today call us inbox us the number to call is 605 313-5388 with an access code of 379088. Call me right now, right after the sermon, so I can pray with you. So I, I, I can confirm with God because the, the word of God says there are two or three gathered in his name. There he will be. 
to let you know that you got support. You got a sister, you got a, a whole body who is just waiting for you to be attached. No matter where you are in the world, welcome to Ministries of Hope Christian Church. Just call us. Call us. If you don't have a church home, just go ahead and call us, inbox us, text us, you know, whatever. Just make sure that you're attached to God. And if, if you if you confess me already have a church home or a church that you've been visiting, go up there and make sure it's a Bible-based church. Go and just serve God and keep studying. Keep on believing. Join us every Tuesday night from 7.30 to 8 p.m. on that same line, 605-313-5388 with an access code of 379 zero eight eight pound when we will be praying together for god to continue changing things in this world uh we we have bible study live on facebook and on youtube every wednesday night starting at 6 p.m and on sunday mornings we have a continuation of that same bible study starting at 9 30 um, AM, and this is on Ministries of Hope Christian Church Facebook and YouTube. The Sunday morning sermon, as usual, is brought to us at 10:30 AM every Sunday morning on Ministries of Hope Christian Church Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Donations to this ministry can be made at Ministries of Hope Christian Church.com. That's the website using the Square or the PayPal. Thank you so much for joining us and may God just continue to move in your life in a mighty way. Have a blessed day.